Welcome back to Blue Collar Coder. Today we're going to look at federated modules, which is a really cool and exciting new feature in Webpack 5. So I could just point you to this article, but I have to say I, I pointed a few friends to that and they're kind of like, mm, I don't get it. So what I want to do is put together a video that kind of shows off some of the main feature points so that you can kind of get right into it and get excited about it because I am super stoked about it. Okay, so let's start with a React app. You know, you're gonna have your libraries you're at the foundation, React, React DOM, Redux, Lodash, Material UI, what have you. On top of that, you're gonna have your store. And then on top of that, you're gonna have a bunch of your front end React components. And this is just a visual representation of it. So let's make two of these things. Okay, so we'll call the first one the home page and the second one the search page. Now, let's say you get a request. You got a really cool product carousel on the home page, and you want to see it on the search page as well. But they're two different projects. So what are you going to do? Well, the first thing you can do is try to extract that code and put it into an NPM library. And then you get into that kind of publish flow, right? So now you got this external project, you publish it. Now you've got to get that new version and pub republish your apps. It's kind of daunting, right? So people have been looking for more of a runtime approach. Okay, so let's promote that now maybe up to an edge side include. In this case, you go and extract the code, then create a bundle of HTML, JS, and CSS, and put that up on S3 somewhere, and then you'd use edge side includes to bring it in right before it goes out to the customer. That works, but it doesn't really play all that well with React. React likes to control the DOM from where it sits all the way down, so it's not going to be super excited if you go and inject some arbitrary HTML into the middle of it. Okay, so what's another option? Well, another option is to do a micro FE thing. So we've looked at a bunch of these on this channel. There's Open Components, Taylor, Single Spa, Zoid. There's a, a bunch of different things, but the gist of it is you're going to go and extract Again, that component out, bundle it as something, an open component or whatever, send it off, register it somewhere, and then consume it in the application. And of course, you do get that live connection. So once you published it, it's live everywhere. But it's still its own externalized thing. Hmm. Now there is federated modules as part of Webpack 5. What you can do is you, now you can just leave it in place. That product carousel stays in home, but then it's externalized. And search can then include it almost seamlessly, as we'll see in just a second. And it also brings along any dependencies, any libraries it needs to go along with it for the ride. It's really cool. So let's go check it out in the code. So here's this project that I just cribbed off to make this video. This is my version. I've changed a few names, scaled down a little bit. This isn't the way I normally go. I like to build projects up from scratch, but this will keep it a little shorter and all the code is linked in the description. So I'm gonna start up this project now that it's loaded into VS Code. And in the meantime, we'll have a look around. Okay, so in the packages directory, we have three apps. Home is the home page, search is the search page, and nav provides a shared header. Now let's have a look in home and look at the webpack. So this is just a normal webpack config with the exception that we're bringing in this module federation plugin. And then we define that down in the plugins. And we can see here our name is home. And I guess the name of the library, not sure why they specifically called that out. Uh, then there's the name for the remote entry file. This is the file that has the meta description of all the stuff that the app exports, which is defined here below. Then we have any remotes that we want to import from, and we want the header from the nav project, so we'll bring in the nav. Then we have to expose what we want from this project, home. And then finally, there are the libraries that we want to vend out. Okay, so let's have a look at how home is bringing in that header from nav. It's just a simple import, and then we use it, just like that. How cool is that? But where does the home app know where to get that nav code? Well, that happens over in index.html in the head where we import the remote entry JavaScript for the nav project. Oh, and home is on port 3000. 
Search is on port 3002 and nav is on port 3003. That's why it's 3003 here. And this is what those three apps look like. Here is home. Notice how it's got a purple header. Then search, which has the default blue header. And then the nav project, which just displays the header, which is also in its default blue. I'm calling out the color because these three projects use Material UI and Material supports theming. And this demonstrates that theming works even across the code shared by different applications. I mean, of course it does, but it's still super cool. Okay, so what we want is this cool product carousel. And we want that to go over on the search page. So let's make that happen. First thing I need to do is go over to searches index.html and add a remote entry for home. Next, I need to add that to the list of remotes over in the webpack and then restart all that webpacking. Next, I'll import it and I'll put it on the page. And then I'll refresh the page and there it is. And if I look at the network tab, I can see it being dynamically imported. That means that if I change it in home, it'll change here instantaneously. All right, now I want to see if I can lazy load this stuff. So let's create a show button. And then we'll create the lazy version of the carousel. And then we need a suspense to make that work. And it looks good on the page so far. Let's open up the network tab and then click on the button. And boom, you can see it being loaded after the initial page load. Nice. All right, neat. So now that product carousel is in search as well as being in home and dynamically updated between those two. That's awesome. But can we do more? Can we go and perhaps do something other than share React objects? Well, let's try that out. Let's kick this off. The home page already has a list of fruit in it and the product card component. So we just need to expose those. We've made the changes to the webpack config. So let's restart just to be safe. And then over in search, I'm going to import the fruit data array and the product card. Next, I'll make a little search field. and a grid to show them all. So while I'm typing this out, the point here is to demonstrate that you don't just have to export React components, it can be any JavaScript. Data like this, or classes, or plain functions, or components from a different UI framework, whatever. Okay, so the first pass will just show the names of all the fruit. Looks like we have them all, so let's filter, as you would on a search page, am I right? So that all looks good. And now let's use that product card. Oh, that looks great. And all of that is from home, which is super cool. That means if home changes, this is going to change too. All right. So hopefully you're seeing how amazing and extensible this mechanism is. And I think it actually changes the architecture of how we think about what a web application does, right? We normally think of a web application as just serving the customer, serving up that HTML or that JS or whatever, to the customer and renders and so on and so forth. Now we have an entirely separate surface, which is an exposure of the internals to other applications. And you can think about this in all kinds of cool context. You know, imagine an admin app that goes and consumes mod uh, React components from the front end app that's going to go and render the content that it's altering, right? So now you're getting live previews because that are pixel perfect because the admin app is actually reusing the code from the front end app. You can think about sharing analytics rules and libraries. You can think about sharing globalization strings. Uh, and we haven't even gotten into the fact that this is all doable via SSR, which means that now that code is available to you on the server side and we can start thinking about all kinds of ways to extend servers with externalized code live. So that's really interesting. And I think I, I can't wait to see how this evolves over the next couple of years. So really excited about that. Anyway, if you like this video, please like it. If you really liked it, I'm always up for a subscribe. Uh, and if you want to keep up with all things front end and advanced front end topics, just 
click on that bell button, and then you'll get notifications whenever I upload a new video, which is great. And of course, thank you and be kind to each other. And uh, for the people that have been watching over the past couple of weeks, we've done a lot on ECMAScript and React and dynamic loading. And I know this is kind of in that space and competitive with that. In fact, very competitive with that. Um, that's just the way of JavaScript, folks. I mean, honestly, you're always going to find three or four ways to do the same sort of thing. And they all have those pros and cons. And knowing about them is the really critical piece. And, you know, kind of like the Mandalorian says, you know, this is the way.